Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. Just reading, um, so still part of the Student as Nigger series, video five. But right now I'm reading the protest movement, the black protest movement of the U of L students, 200 U of L students joining the protest of the fire no, or the uh, campus police, the police brutality um, on campus. So here's the article. So, 200 black University of Louisville students joined in a rally in March yesterday to protest what they termed discriminatory treatment by the U of L campus security police. Reading from a prepared statement, John Marshall, U of L sophomore, <coughs> and rally organizer said, "We, the black students at the University of Louisville, find ourselves constantly under racist situations presented by members of the administration." Marshall said the demonstration stemmed from an incident Sunday morning when a black student, Stephen L. Boyd, was arrested by two security officers. Boyd was arrested about 1.30 a.m. Sunday inside a U of L dormitory 4, first in Avery Streets, where he lives and was charged with two counts of assault and battery on police, destruction of private property, and disorderly conduct, which are some fucking charges that'll fuck up your life. The accounts of Boyd's arrest vary. Several U of L black students said Boyd had been sitting on the lap of a white female student in the, the dorm lobby when the dorm desk clerk called campus security. Students claimed the clerk believed Boyd was ha harassing the woman. Campus policemen arrived and attempted to arrest Boyd, who was in the dorm dormitory restroom at the time, students said, and a scuffle ensued. Another security officer came to the first officer's aid, and Louisville police were called. Later at, later, at least five city police cars arrived at the scene, students said. The students said the security officers never identified themselves as police and that they used excessive force in making the arrest. Daniel Keller, U of L Director of Public Safety, said that according to the reports filed by the arresting officer, Sergeant Carls J. Oat, and Patrolman John Nolte, they had identified themselves as campus policemen. Uh, Keller, Daniel Keller, U of L Director of Public Safety, said that according to the officer's report, Boyd ignored Odie's identification and walked into the dorm restroom, and that's when the officer followed him in altercation and ensued when Boyd striking the officer several times. At a sometimes highly emotional rally in U of L's Lincoln Room, black students expressed their grievances and issued a list of demands to the school's administration. The students' demands were resignation of Keller, Daniel Keller, you gotta go, Re dismissal of the two arresting officers, written certification that Boyd will continue to be housed and enrolled at U of L, appointment of a special investigation committee to review Boyd's case, public apology from the university to Boyd, establishment of a permanent committee ex including black students and black staff members, the NAACP, Urban League, and other agencies to investigate the U of L security department and screen prospective campus police officers. Responding to student criticism, Keller said that no one involved in student Sunday's incident had filed a formal complaint against his department, and therefore no action had been taken. Keller added that he didn't have first-hand information about the incident because he was out of town. Need for weapons questioned. Several students questioned the necessity of campus police carrying guns, nightsticks, and handcuffs. Keller cited two campus police two campus kidnapping incidents as reasons for needing weapons to protect students. Explained that only a few members of his 13-man force are allowed to carry guns, Keller said his department has three divisions, commissioned officers, student officers, and a security man. He said that the only uh, that only the commissioned officers who have received formal police training are allowed to carry guns. The student officers primarily issue parking tickets while the older security men lock up and check buildings, Keller said. Students accused Keller and his officers of permitting white students to streak while black students were arrested for minor offenses. So white students could <laughs> run around naked, right? That's, that's what white people was doing in the 60s and 70s, running around naked. That's all the good whites were doing, just running around naked. Didn't know what the fuck to do, but let's just fucking streak. Keller said that streaking is basically against the law, but that his officers had been unable to catch the streakers. <laughs> said his streakers are too fucking fast for their fucking fat-ass fucking donut-eating cops. So... Uh, after the discussion, the students marched from the U of L University Center building to the offices of public safety, where Boyd informed security officials that he and his lawyer would file a complaint charging police brutality at 9 a.m. today. Later, Dr. John Hill, assistant to U of L president Dr. James G. Miller, who was out of town, met with the students and told them that a hearing would be conducted on Boyd's arrest. Gary Brown, a member of U of L's Black Student Union, said that the representatives of the Black Student Body will meet with U of L Executive Vice President William F. Ekstrom to discuss the issue. William F. Ekstrom, a fucking racist who the library is named after. The Ekstrom Library is named after William Ekstrom, who was vice president during this entire debacle. So, yeah, I got a lot of actually 
interesting things. Um, the educated in a democracy need to take a leadership role to show folks how to be part of the process or to be able to dictate the process to get power and influence, like the talented tenth. There are some folks who have ability to abstract, have abstract reasoning and hypothetical thinking. 66% of high schoolers do not have it. They get out of school and they do not have this capability of thinking. They cannot study. They cannot uh, uh, abstract thinking. They can't, you know, think about um, about their own, you know, their own bullshit. They can't think about their own fucking bullshit. So they can't think about. Uh, <laughs> They can't think about their own fucking. But what am I talking about? The ten, talent to ten. Oh, they can't think about abstract thoughts, or they can't think in hypothetical reasoning. So, what if Sally was to take a bike? What do you mean, Sally is on a fucking bike? Is she okay? Is she get a wreck? No, no, it's hypothetical. She's in a bike wreck. Whoa, whoa, hold on. What's going on with the bike wreck? You know, you keep talking about this fucking bike wreck, but I'm not supposed to get. It's hypothetical, motherfucker. It's abstract reasoning. I'm just fucking. It's a fucking situation that it happened, so you should be able to learn from it. Sixty-six percent of college, of uh, high school students don't learn that. And actually, critical thinking, two-thirds of college students don't have critical thinking skills. So, America's education system's fucked. It's so fucked. We're slipping behind in every fucking indicator that we are, you know, that, that there is out there. The education system is fucked here. The boys talked about the talented tenth, where you would have the 10% of the uh, black folks who would get into leadership positions, and then they would be able to uh, move their, their people to, to the promised land, right? So, the single main point of a U of L liberal arts education is to teach you to be obedient to authority. They want you to be obedient to authority so that you be a good corporate stooge, good and obedient to fudge the numbers when you're told to, to pass out variable interest rate housing loans to poor people, and only to focus on the bottom line, to never speak up against idiotic ideas, to never stand up to an oppressive dickhead fuck, to call them an asshole when they're being an asshole, especially when they're talking to you like you're stupid as fuck, or to call their demands stupid, especially if they are. U of L liberal arts education teaches you to just sit there like a dumb fuck and be passive and lethargic and any of your peers expresses an original idea, especially one that's convincing, then it's your job to make sure your comrade is knocked down a peg or two. You can't have anybody speaking up fucking good thoughts, making you look bad. You can't have some fucking colleague of yours saying some shit in class that sounds good. You, know, you got to fucking argue with them. You got to shit on them. That's what the slaves do in order to get the masses love. They got to fight each other. This gets us to not relate to each other. Instead, we look at each other with competition. Instead, we war with one another. And with my problem with this capitalistic... That's my problem. You know, with this capitalistic dog-eat-dog -dog system. Is I know that none of you motherfuckers give a shit about me. I know if I'm homeless, you motherfuckers are going to walk right past me. I know that if I'm in fucking Iraq, get my head blown off in Iraq, you wouldn't give a fuck. It's dog-eat-dog -dog capitalism. So I know you motherfuckers don't give a fuck about me. And when you're a dick to my contribution, you verify something I already knew to begin with. It just sucks because I really want an education this year. And it's more important for these other person, people to tell me that I'm wrong about something than it is to give a fuck about others. You won't tell the fucking teacher that they're wrong. You won't tell them that. You don't give a shit about that. You wouldn't give a fuck if the cops beat me up, throw me in prison. You wouldn't see this media footage of me getting my tent stolen by the campus police. You won't see that shit. And even if you did see it, they wouldn't give a fuck. If I was homeless, I know y'all would walk over me. So... I know all about the Americans. I know all about you all. I know you're a bunch of evil, heartless fucks. You only give a fuck about yourselves. You learn to cope with the misery and hardship to ignore it, to have the strength to not look that homeless man in the eye. You know, that's hard for you, man. It's so hard for me to ignore motherfuckers in pain and misery. And uh, to have the strength to not look at the homeless man in the eye. In fact, you go about singing and dancing and being merry as hell. And you probably even tell the motherfucker to go get a job. You know, because, like, uh, I'm sure people's going to hire a motherfucking stinky-ass bastard that wears fucking underwear on his head. And I'm sure that fucking homeless guy is going to is gonna get a good job at, at McDonald's. I'm sure McDonald's is going to hire that homeless guy, right? No, I know, I know about you all. I know that you all, you know, are a bunch of selfish, fucking, egotistical, greedy maniacs. And that you already looked at us as competition anyways, for jobs, for labor, for anything out there. We're all fucking competitors. None of us are real friends. And, you know, even if we are friends, when we go to the class, the fucking massive, make sure that we're separated, that we don't actually, uh, our, our relationship is fucking torn for that second, right? Or for that hour. I already knew that you didn't give a fuck, but now you're fucking with my grades. So you want to fucking talk up against me in fucking class, you piece of shit? Okay, so let's not have a real fucking education. You're a dickhead. Uh, but now you're fucking up with my grade. My grade's how I move up, and you're trying to fuck that up. You know, you don't have to fucking argue with me. Just let me say my shit. You let them say their fucking shit. Let me say my shit. You got something to say? You can talk to me after class. Talk to me afterwards. But you gonna fucking say it in class, you fucking dick? I know you're an asshole. Fucking Uncle Tom dick sucker.
I guess it just sucks because you want some people to be your friends, but really they're just a bunch of fucking slaves. They're a bunch of niggers, right? They're a bunch of fucking Uncle Tom dick suckers. Just like Jerry Farber said, the students are the niggers and the professors are the oppressors. They're the slave drivers. And it would take somebody who can question power and authority to be able to figure that shit out. People I talked about was like, huh? Huh? What you talking about? Huh? What you talking about? What's all this talk about? Slavery and masterdom and all that shit. I don't understand about that shit. I just do as the professor tells me to, and that's all I got to do. Yeah, right. All you fucking hillbillies. So don't even fucking pretend like you ain't, okay? Every one of you motherfucking liberal leaders fucking dickheads. I hear your fucking twang. I see who you are. I see how you all fucking act and behave. You ain't no fucking different. Bunch of fucking hillbillies. All y'all. Uh, if you are a hillbilly, be proud of being a hillbilly. But if you ain't a hillbilly, I mean as an insult. It means you're stupid. You're stupid and you're too simple. You only know how to fucking follow orders. You can't stand up for yourself. And that's another thing that pissed me off about my education. I I try to focus on just a couple things so I'm not all, you know, all discombobulated. But I wanted to learn how to stand up and speak up. I, I, I had two years at UofL to learn how to stand up and speak up. And I had so much fucking resistance all around. No fucking support. I know I just got to get this fucking energy out from inside of me and just get it out and let it fucking shine that way. Because, uh, you know, Tupac said that shit. You're going to be mocked and ridiculed. People are going to try to knock you down all your fucking life. Uh, but if you're great, that's just what people, that's what mediocre people do to great people. So, if you're great, don't worry about it. You keep standing tall. You keep, you stay strong. You stand tall. Don't let anybody knock their shoulders down. So, you know, I would like to be in a conversation where we empower each other, where we have dialogue, a pedagogy of the oppressed, a Paulo Freire type of education. Even, um... Well, there was one gentleman that had pedagogy of the oppressed, but he still had the dictatorship and the slave situation going on. So when you empower somebody, you know, you can actually, you're not only learning from each other, but then you'd be making bonds and connections that would be able to stay with people until you're dead. You know, and in fact, you should never express an original idea. The professor gets nervous as if having one challenging idea would knock them over forever. Like, oh shit, how insecure they are. The ideal education is St. John's College, and after I have that ideal education in my brain, it's hard to accept any other education. St. John's College. I read an article in uh, U.S. Weekly or U.S. News or Newsweek or something about it, and the, the article is called The Life of a Mind, and the life of a mind at St. John's College is what they were trying to teach you. So the life of a mind at St. John's College said so you would learn the great works, you would learn the great authors of all Western civilization. Their professors was Plato and Socrates and um, you know, Einstein and Newton and all these great authors who have taught us many things about the world and about science. So we learn those things at great books, but we're not being taught them. It's not like there's actually a, a motherfucking professor saying, you've got to learn this and you've got to learn that. What we have at St. John's College is a decentralized organization. You have an advisor. There are no professors, just advisors. And advisors stay off to the side in the corner and they force you all to talk about the material you were supposed to read. So you're supposed to go home and read Henry David Thoreau. You're supposed to read some Shea Guevara, talk about some revolution. How come you don't have any talk about revolution? That's how you're graded. Is uh, based on your participation and your exams was based on how well you could articulate the knowledge that you had read and talked about in class with the advisor. So the the grades were better. They didn't have written tests. They actually made sure the knowledge was in your brain before you walked out of class. And one guy had said something about, yeah, learning the great books might not have got me a lot of money, but it get, did give me my own mind, and it gave me my own brain, and that is invaluable. And you know what? That sounded so fucking great. That sounds so fucking nice. I feel like I've been manipulated and pushed and prodded and been trying to push into a box ever since I've been five years old. Motherfuckers just want you to do this or do that, and they don't give you good advice, and people don't actually steer you in the directions that you're supposed to be steered into. They just doing it because they want to manipulate you, and there's lots of manipulators and exploiters out here. The whole fucking system is based on manipulation and exploiting. How are we supposed to know any different? Well, this is the education system we come up out of. We're supposed to export democracy overseas when we don't have freedom and democracy here. I've never had democracy in the United States. Even in my democracy class, there was no fucking democracy. The professor was proud about it. Professor Ziegler was happy that we didn't have democracy in the democracy class. And I suggested we need democracy in the classroom. And that was like, whoa, what did he say? Right? And they all want to fucking look at me like I'm the fucking asshole. Yeah, that's what it felt like. They were all like quiet and silent. No, nobody said, hey, I agree with you or any fucking thing. So that's fucking wonderful. 
so anyways, they got mentors, they got advisors and mentors, uh, readings assigned. You pull the ideas out, so you're teaching each other amongst with your peers and your colleagues. And most importantly, it's not the professor's interpretation, but it's your own and it's your friends. It's what you all come away with and walk away with it. That's what's important. That's what's important anyways. You teach me whatever the fuck you know I want to learn. In fact, actually, uh, Bruce Tyler's class, I walked out of, well, uh, this would be next one, but Bruce Tyler class story coming up about how students cannot learn.